This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Pneumaticotoscopy and cerumen removal will be discussed in this video. Mastery of otoscopic examination techniques is necessary for the accurate diagnosis of otitis media. Otitis media is a general term for middle ear inflammation and may be classified clinically as either acute otitis media or otitis media with effusion. In general, acute otitis media is diagnosed when the tympanic membrane is bulging, and otitis media with effusion is diagnosed when the tympanic membrane is neutral or retracted. Otoscopic examination is indicated in children who have an upper respiratory tract infection, who exhibit unaccustomed tugging of the ears, or who have irritability, difficulty sleeping, fever, otalgia, otorrhea, or hearing loss. For pneumatic otoscopy, you will need an otoscope with a diagnostic head that has an attached rubber bulb and a movable lens. Cerumen removal is most readily accomplished using an otoscope with a surgical head, but a diagnostic head also may be used. You should use the largest otoscopic speculum that fits comfortably into the external auditory canal. For very large canals, soft tip speculums may be needed. An appropriately sized blunt ear curette can be used to remove large pieces of cerumen. Metal curettes are preferable to plastic curettes. The rigid and delicate loop on the metal curettes allows for finer dissection. If small fragments of cerumen remain after using the blunt curette, use an applicator with a non-serrated triangular tip wrapped with cotton. This can also be used to clear otorrhea in children with acute otitis media who have ruptured tympanic membranes. To ensure that there are no leaks, squeeze the rubber bulb and then place your finger on the tip of the speculum. In a system with no leaks, the bulb should stay deflated until the finger is removed. Older children and cooperative younger children may be examined in the sitting position, either in their parents' lap or on the examination table. Uncooperative children are best examined while recumbent, in either prone or supine position. The head should be firmly immobilized by an assistant. A second assistant, usually the parent, braces the child's body against the examination table. Depending on the child's position, one of the assistants must also firmly hold the child's hands. With the child fully immobilized and with the child's head secured by an assistant, insert the otoscope into the external auditory canal using your dominant hand. Once in the proper position, use your non-dominant hand to hold the otoscope in place. Partially displace the lens of the otoscope and insert the blunt ear curette into the speculum. Under direct visualization, advance the loop of the curette behind the piece of cerumen. Do not attempt to break through the cerumen as this may result in further impaction. Rather, try to pass the loop of the curette behind the piece of cerumen, being careful not to traumatize the walls of the external auditory canal or the tympanic membrane with the curette. If small amounts of cerumen still remain, insert the triangular applicator wrapped in cotton approximately 0.5 centimeters in the canal. Twist the applicator while withdrawing it from the canal. Alternatively, you may use an irrigation technique. Obtain a large syringe filled with lukewarm water connected to butterfly tubing to flush out the cerumen. Use of cold water should be avoided as it is uncomfortable and may cause nystagmus. Assess the position of the tympanic membrane by visualizing the manubrium and short process of the malleus. When the tympanic membrane is in the neutral position, the manubrium and the short process are clearly visible. When the tympanic membrane is bulging, the short process is not visible and the tympanic membrane appears convex. When the tympanic membrane is retracted, the manubrium appears foreshortened and the short process appears prominent. Next, assess the translucency of the tympanic membrane. 
A translucent tympanic membrane has a ground glass appearance and allows visualization of the underlying middle ear structures. When middle ear effusion is present, the tympanic membrane appears opaque and visualization of middle ear landmarks is impaired. Assess the color of the tympanic membrane. Although color alone is not diagnostic, an amber color usually indicates the presence of otitis media with effusion. White or yellow discoloration may be seen in both acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion. Look for areas of intense erythema on the tympanic membrane, a finding that indicates acute inflammation. When present together with opacification and bulging of the tympanic membrane, this finding supports the diagnosis of acute otitis media. Mild erythema and injection of the tympanic membrane are nonspecific findings and often occur if the child is crying during the examination. To create positive pressure, insert the pneumatic otoscope without placing any pressure on the bulb. Then depress the bulb gently and observe the degree of movement of the tympanic membrane away from you. To create negative pressure, insert the otoscope with the bulb partially depressed. Release the bulb and observe the degree of movement of the tympanic membrane towards you. In the absence of middle ear effusion, the tympanic membrane will move briskly. When middle ear effusion is present, as in acute otitis media or otitis media with effusion, mobility will be decreased or absent. A common mistake is to use a speculum that is too small relative to the size of the ear canal, which causes a leak in the system. Proper performance of pneumatic otoscopy is critical for the accurate diagnosis of acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion. Clinicians should master this technique in order to provide optimal care for children with this common condition.